You've got mail. Yes. Open this box so hard. Part two of that unboxing, guys. Oh, hey, my name's Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. How you guys doing today? All right, so I have this unboxing. I told you guys it's made in China. That's a dumb sticker to have on that box. Um, I told you guys that I had this really cool thing that I was excited to unbox. Uh, just, I'm, I'm actually thoroughly excited. Like, I, I can't wait to unbox this. It's from, obviously, a favorite OEM, which is QSP. There's, there's such a great OEM. I, I just, da, even their own, own designs, I really, really, truly love. I think they're awesome. So, I took a shot in the dark. I really liked the design of this. Like, I really loved the design language. Like, I looked at it, and I'm like, yes, I think... That's going to be awesome. And then I saw the price and I was like, oh, you're probably the most expensive one of these I've bought. So it was a hard pill to swallow. But without further ado, this is a QSP. Okay. Um, this is by far and large the most expensive QSP production design by QSP that I think exists. Sort of like extra goofy shit. Oh, like I, I'm so excited for this one that if it turns out to be the way that I think it is, like it's, it almost looks like it's kind of like a no frills, perfect knife with a lot of enthusiast element in it, but that's just me talking about it, right? That like, I haven't seen it yet. Um, so I guess here I could show you the card. This is going to be the, I, I think it's in the title. I don't know why I'm being cryptic throughout the whole thing. Greetings, thank you for choosing the QSP knife. We hope you enjoy it. Here are some specifications about your knife. Uh, this is the QSP Legatus, the QS136. It's ball bearing eight and, a, and an eighth inch. Eight and an eighth. We have, it's a frame lock, flipper, titanium, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. All right, and cheap asses. I have a specific inlay. And it says inlay options. And it didn't even check the one that I have. Like, you just threw a generic card in there. That is actually kind of irritating. It sounds stupid, but that, that just tells me that, like, they're running them off the production floor and not taking the time. Like, if you're not going to take the time, don't put the freaking check mark there. Not a big deal at all. I just, I don't like that. Because if you miss little things, guys, if you miss some little things, it tells me that you're able to miss some bigger things. QSP has not been the person that I've seen miss bigger things. I've seen them cheap out on certain things to keep things at a certain price. I don't consider that missing. I consider that like a choice, right? They made that choice because this knife is $50. I had to do this. Just don't even give me the damn card with the option. If you're not going to do it, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, Billy Jean? Oh. So this is one of those knives. Ah. Yes. So this is one of the very, very cool. This, this titanium finish is like, it's like a raw titanium, but it might be blasted because it has this darker gray tint than like a raw titanium. Um, let's see here. Let's see, like this is like a stonewashed titanium. Um, what's this? This is another stonewashed titanium. That's like a bead blast titanium or something i don't know maybe it's like a vapor blast i don't know anyways so really cool looking the seams on the carbon fiber the carbon fiber is raised a little bit to probably add some traction and oh wow does that feel good it looks like the shiny laminate carbon fiber kind of in the video but when you touch it you feel all the texturing and it feels really good um, no gaps around either of the carbon fiber, no missing chunks out of the carbon fiber. So this is 
I'm not going to say this is end cut, but this isn't like the, what do they call that? The marbled carbon fiber that has all the voids. So this is kind of like just the regular carbon fiber. So there's no voids, no nothing. It almost feels like leather. It's pretty cool. All right, so just a regular old milled pocket clip. You know, I don't hate it because it kind of follows the curvature. It follows the design. Yes, they did a lanyard post, which I actually think they're cool looking despite not wear, like using a lanyard. I think that looks cool. But there's no gaps in the fitment there. The blade is perfectly centered. It appears we have an over-travel stop, which I'm sure with a plate and a detent built in. The cool little QSP logo there. What appears to be T6, T6, and maybe a T8. Let's see. There does not appear to be any milling on the blade. Thank you guys for watching. I'm just kidding. I'll flip it open. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't want to touch the ergos yet. Let's just admire this blade. This is just a generic satin finish. Uh, it's almost less than it. Like, you still see the lines, but there's a high reflectivity in the satin finish. Let's see here. Let's clean this off a little bit. I don't know if you guys can tell. See that? That's that's abnormal for satin finishes. Um, so here's a side to side satin finish. There's like not that same. See what I'm talking about? Like it has a mirror like satin finish. It's almost like they did a satin finish and then took like a thousand grit over it, which isn't gonna get you a mirror, but it's gonna get you like polish. It's like a polished satin finish. That's cool. The lockup seems to be at about 30%, which I'm cool with as long as we have no slipping. That's awesome. BDW design. Uh, shit. I don't know who BDW is. I don't know who BDW is. Sorry. I thought this was a pure in-house design, but it definitely says B or DBW. DBW. Um, damn, I should know who that is. Okay, so I know this profile to to, to some people might look weird, okay? Um, I first looked at it, and like I was fighting with the mental thought of the profile. To me, once it clicked, this looked like they took every... That's why I'm not touching it ergonomically yet. This looked like they took every step in the ergonomic thought process in this. Yes, the design is there. I feel like the choices made into this were like ergonomic centric. Okay. And, and it just it like the way this comes up and then the pad for your thumb to land and then the swell comes back out and it does have a curvature here, but it's a gentle curvature. And then you have this pretty generous, shallow finger choil there. So your finger doesn't suck all the way back. And you do have some generous swoops right here or not generous, but kind of light swoops that give you some contouring in hand without needing the contouring. And then even the inlay being just a slight bit raised from the scale gives you a little bit more traction with your fingertips to hold on to. And not the feeling of contouredness, but a feeling of a little bit of extra meat in your hands. Now, yes, I just went on a kind of like a BS rant about that's what went through my brain when I saw it online. And that's why I looked at it and I'm like, this really could be one of those knives that I choose. Like, So without further ado, let us feel it. Um, yeah, yep. I don't want to be like, yo, I was right. Uh, no, this feels really good. This choked up position does not feel as good. Okay. I will say it does not feel as good. And part of it is actually because they cut it so shallow. It's like you're pushing into, you can feel this and that, um, I don't know that I'll be doing heavy duty work here. I feel like I'll be doing heavy duty work here. And I don't feel like this is uncomfortable. It's just not the ergonomic dream that I had originally anticipated. Now this, this, this feels good. All right. Is this going to be QSP fashion? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so one thing I really love about what QSP does... <laughs> Is that this lock bar? Wow, that's really cool. Hold on, let's take a look at these details. You want to take a look at some details, guys? Let's see here. I'm trying to zoom in. Can you guys see that they did some micro chamfering all around the lock bar? 
Remember how lock bar cutouts we, we I used to talk about a lot are really, really sharp? They knocked it all down. All these edges are actually rounded. Holy crap, the detail that went into this. Um, all right, so now I know I'm gushing over a QSP knife, and I know I'm gushing over a knife that I was excited for. And I don't talk about the detail that often. But what I mean by detail is it goes back to the thought process. They really focused on ergonomics here because just the way that everything is designed and laid out, it's soft. The only thing that's sharp here is the inside of this, which I can honestly tell you I can't feel. I can't feel the inside of the scales. Um, let's check the spine. So the spine has, it's not really knocked down, but they knocked, that's cool too. So they took a swedge, a very shallow swedge, carried it all the way out to the tip of the knife, which matches perfectly on both sides. And it acts as like, almost like a crown. Like this is kind of sharp, but nowhere near as sharp as it could be. So we have QSP and M390 on one side, the DBW design and whoever that designer is. If you guys know who that is, uh, let me know in the comments below. I, I don't, I don't offhand know who that is. Uh, kind of cool set and finish going on here. Very sticky for fingerprints. That's going to annoy me. But another thing that I really like about this is look at the belly on this blade. Like you gave me a very generous belly here. That also is very cool. Um, it's it's if you're gonna get a blade with a belly like it's nice to have one you know if you wanted to do some you can do some light you know kitchen work with this you can do quite a bit um i keep saying um because i'm like this is the first knife in a while that i unboxed and i'm like i'm fascinated with it right clearly i'm going on i made its own video make you know whatever all right so i'm gonna try one more thing like I do in most of my videos. I know this will break in well because every other QSP has broken in perfectly and this thing's already damn near drop shut. But what I do with all my knives when I first get them, if I don't work them in, I add a drop of oil on the detent ball so that it does this. Let it work in one time. See that? Yeah, and then even even listen to it when it sucks back in. It's got a really strong detent. Not really strong, but it's got a cool sound. It's almost like it like sings, but it sings like we talked about, like in a, in a dull in a dull sing. It almost sounds like you you kind of hit a wiffle bat. And I know you guys are like that doesn't sound cool. It is when your knife's locking up. All right, this lock bar is so light. It feels great. Oh God, you see that? Just with a couple. This thing is so cool. Oh, I really, really like this. Um, let's get a cut going on here, and then I'll let you guys go. I, I really, really like it. I am, I am nowhere near mad about this purchase. I think this is going to be one that I... I did a pretty damn good job with the sharpening here. That's one thing I didn't check. I didn't check my bevel. So what they also did is they mitigated the need for a plunge grind with the finger choil, or mitigated the need for a sharpening choil with the finger choil that we have, um, and they did it in a very good way, so that's cool. But let's take a look at this edge. It's probably a 20 or 22 degree edge because it is relatively, like, tiny, tiny or secondary grind. Uh, which, you know, is, it, is what it is. Let's check something here. The blade stock. I, I like checking the blade stock every now and then because it tells me, um, as you learn more about it, it tells you more and more. That blade stock looks like it's 140,000. 150. Okay, so it's relatively thick. The behind the edge, you're getting around 14,000. But if I were to sharpen it and lay that edge back, I'm probably looking closer to 20 thousandths behind the edge. And then after three or four sharpenings, this is what Neves Knives talks about. You're going to be at 25 thousandths. I mean, so, yeah, th that's not the greatest. 
Um, I don't see an issue with it, but it's just not one that's going to win that category for sure. Oh, this is nice. I am convinced at this point. So if you guys feel this, you guys can't, but if you guys feel how it feels to break that detent, how the flipper tab is done, and then how it feels on the way down, and I know, you guys hear this right now? Hold on. That's going to go away. I could probably make that go away in an hour, okay? Um, and then this thing is going to be even smoother on the fall. It's just going to go like this. And you're not going to see any. Ah, oh, it's just going to be so good. So I am on, at this point in time, to be perfectly honest, guys, as far as tolerance-wise and the way shit drops shut and everything, I am almost convinced that QSP's action for the sub-300 range is the best. So, for example, here is my $95 Titanium Penguin. See that? Like, absolute, and this is at an angle, so here's up top. Now, here's your normal actions. This is what you do when you normally take it out of your pocket and then put it away. So, point being here is I am convinced after feeling so many QSPs, after feeling, guys, I've felt probably 500 different knives in the past year, year and a half, um, from all sorts of brands, high and low. I, I'm not going to compare this with, like, you know, the big dogs, like the Riots and stuff. But, oh, and that's a bad version of a Wii. I was going to pull out a Wii and show you that. Here's, so here's the Wii Sakshi. Okay, this is a liner lock. This has really good action, okay? I will give Wii, they feel snappier. I guess that's, they feel snappier, okay? QSP feels more controlled. We feels like they jacked up their detent so that you can't fail it, which is good, right? That's what you want. And it's got a relatively smooth on the way down. But this is just stupid. I know it's two different knives. Anyways, I'm done gushing. Um, I, I'm going to go on record to say that sub $300, I think overall QSP probably has the best action in any knives. And... I've experienced that in every single knife that I've owned from the QSP Copperhead to the QSP Puffin to the QSP Puff or Pelican to both of my QSP Penguins. The only one that may not have fit that bill was the QSP Phoenix. Even the QSP... Uh, shit, what is that one that's like $115, like a drop point looking thing? I don't remember what it is, but even that one was great. So this is no surprise in that feel, and actually, I recognize the feeling. It's just kind of emphasized with higher quality at this point. All right, done gushing. That's all I got for you guys. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. Hope this was entertaining. Hope I didn't gush too much. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great rest of your day. Yeah.